Here with this week's hottest stories in the investment world, this is Zach's Friday Finish Line. Hello, and welcome to the Zach's Friday Finish Line. I'm Ryan McQueenie, a content writer here at Zach's, along with one of our editors, Maddie Johnson. Today is Friday, September 15th, and we're here to recap this week's biggest stories from the investment and financial world. This week, the world's attention was firmly firmly planted on the consumer electronics industry as Apple's keynote event on Tuesday unveiled several highly anticipated products. And a bit later in the show, we'll be talking about these new gadgets and how they might affect other major players in the industry. But first, we're going to start with this week's other major story, the Equifax hack. Uh, Cybersecurity attacks have become rather common these days, but the scope and severity of this particular attack is relatively unprecedented in the United States. Maddie, can you fill us in on the full story? Yeah. So attacking more than just Game of Thrones, Mm. it's affecting (laughs) over... 100 million Americans. <laughs> but yes, late last week, we learned that Equifax, one of the three major credit report companies, so pretty important, mm-hmm. had suffered a major data breach. The hack took place between mid-May and July of this year and was discovered in late July. Um, so since then, no other reports of intrusion at the company have surfaced, but the damage has al- was already done. And according to Equifax, up to 143 million Americans are affected and professionals in the field has, have said there is a very good chance you are one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have a credit report, there's upwards of a 50% chance you were affected. This has already been said to be one of the worst cyber attacks on record, nor just because of the number of people affected, but also because of the type of information that was compromised. And as a credit rating agency, Equifax has its customers' birth dates, social security numbers, and driver's license numbers. So, again, pretty important information. Information you don't want to just you know, give out yeah. freely, nor do you want people to just take from you. And now I'll add as well, on top of that type of personal information was the 143 million people. There's also several hundred thousand people whose credit card numbers were also directly oh. taken. So that's nice. little cherry yeah. on top. There. <laughs> Even worse, part of Equifax's business is to backstop information to protect against security breaches and now that this itself has been breached this effectively erases the backstop ah okay so it gets even worse yes Mm. uh shares of equifax dropped more than 30 percent in one week and the company will now face an uphill battle to win our trust back yeah i saw an interesting point that as far as like sheer number of accounts compromised this is like smaller than even the the Yahoo breach from uh, Mm -hmm. earlier this year. I guess it was revealed earlier this year, but significantly worse as far as, you know, that being maybe your birth date, social security number, driver's license number, basically everything that you need to steal someone's identity, uh, that the severity of this is is much, much worse than some of the other ones that we have covered in the news uh, recently. So not good, especially that 50-50 chance that we were affected. That doesn't make you feel <laughs> too comfortable. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually, I first read this story when it first happened, when it first reported. I was on my phone uh, getting ready for bed and I was just like scrolling through Facebook and I saw it, and I like first didn't click on it, and I was like, "Oh, Equ- Equifax, Ugh, whatever." But then it kept popping up, yeah, because it was like breaking news, breaking news. And I finally, I was like, "Okay, let's see what this is about." And then I was like, like this like feeling of dread, mm-hmm. and I saw like the like the sheer number of people that are like likely affected by it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna sleep great tonight." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a good one. <laughs> to Worrying read, about right? my financial security. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not a good one to read right before bed, I will say that. Moving on a little bit here, we got a lot to cover from the Apple event on Tuesday. I think you probably have heard of it, unless you were under a rock this week. Mm. Um, The keynote that we've been looking forward to all year, it was actually the first ever event at the brand new Steve Jobs Theater in Cupertino, California. Which looks 
beautiful. Be gorgeous. Yes, it's located at the company's corporate headquarters and obviously dedicated to Apple's late co-founder, part of a bigger expansion of their headquarters with their new campus that they covered. They actually opened the event with kind of an, a dedication to Steve Jobs. Tim Cook had some moving words about company now being able to feel happy about his legacy as opposed to, you know, getting over that sadness of his his death. And then they, they talked about the new campus too, which I thought was interesting because they kind of segued that into talking about some changes that they had made to the retail stores. Apparently, the people that design the campus are also the same people that designed, uh, that do design like their bigger retail storefront location. Well, and Apple's head of retail used to work at Burberry. Interesting. And that gorgeous pink coat she was wearing, mm-hmm. it was like a $3,500 Burberry coat. So and she's like, got some old school. I'm like, she knows what she's doing. Stuff going on. And that's why the new like retail concepts of Apple sound amazing. Yeah. Um, and that's no, we aren't even really going to get into that very much. And that, that was a super interesting way to start the event, I will say. Um, but I want to start first with the first product announcement, which was the Apple Watch Series 3. So confirming uh, very detailed rumors. It felt like we kind of knew everything about the Series 3 and Watch OS 4 before the event even started. But confirming those rumors, those those two things were indeed uh, unveiled at the keynote. And I think the big takeaway here is that both of these reveals showed Apple's trend towards more health-based features. So Watch OS 4 boasts a redesigned workout app, as well as new features for swimmers and gym goers. Watch OS 4 can also track flights of stairs climbed. And the watch can also now notify a user if their heart rate is elevated when they don't appear to be active. The Series 3 watch, of course, the big feature there is uh, built-in cellular service. But overall, a more health focus for the uh, watch. Apple said is now the number one watch in the world as far as sales go, the Apple Watch is. Now, the Series 3 is going to start at $399. So certainly um, also a pricier smartwatch. Interestingly enough, the surprise winner here from this announcement has been Fitbit, which recently debuted its own smartwatch, the Fitbit Ionic. Uh, This is the first official smartwatch from the wearable tech company. Uh, The Ionic will feature improved heart rate monitoring, and that's going to include resting heart rate that can help each individual person understand their ideal heart rate zones. There's also sleep tracking and just like the Watch OS 4 and Watch Series 3 features for runners and swimmers. Basically, the only thing that's not in the Ionic that is in the Apple Watch is that built-in cellular service. Although with the case with Fitbit, it operates kind of like the previous Apple Watches where they can be synced up to your phone. And the Fitbit Ionic is also only $299, which is a whole $100 cheaper than the lowest price version of the Watch Series 3. So I found this notable because Fitbit shares are up over 10% from their Monday close. Uh, You can actually kind of almost see an exact correlation between the end of the Watch Series 3 unveiling and a steady rise in Fitbit shares this week. There's probably a few other elements at play here, but since the Ionic is so much cheaper than the Apple Watch Series 3 and also includes a major focus on health, it could end up being the first choice for fitness-focused wearables this year, especially as we head into the holiday season. And, uh, you know, based on the share price action, it looks like investors are maybe making that connection as well. So, yeah, busy week for Apple, but uh, turned out to be a very busy week for Fitbit as well and got some free attention on the new Ionic smartwatch, which is coming to stores very soon. Other companies that were kind of in the spotlight after the Apple keynote included uh, Amazon and Netflix uh, for some things related to the Apple TV. And I'm going to bounce that one over to you, Maddie. Yeah, kind of surprising. I wasn't really expecting those two names to pop up in the Mm -hmm. keynote. But another major product announcement, like you said, was Apple's new TV, Apple TV 4K. So two key technologies make this edition of Apple TV stand out from other cord-cutting options, 4K 
and HDR, but these two technologies, of course, are not new um, and are a combination to get, you know, together that has been around for a while now in TV monitors. But Apple went on to announce a new A10X processing chip with a two time two X right? two mm-hmm. times CPU performance. Don't really know chip lingo, mm-hmm. as well as a new version of TVOS. Another big part of this announcement was the content library. So prior to the official unveiling, we had heard that Apple was clashing with movie studios over what price to sell their 4K films at, but that looks to be resolved, and Apple Apple is slated to have content from the likes of 20th Century Fox, Lionsgate, Paramount Universal, Warner Brothers, and Sony Pictures. The big the, names. The, the, the big names, the six big studios over in Hollywood. And another big announcement is the arrival of live sports and live news to Apple TV. And this was really cool. Even I think it's really cool. So users will even be able to turn the score feature off for certain games that they're like, oh, I don't know. So what do you think about this, like the score feature? Yeah, it was interesting that they they specifically mentioned that. I feel like everything in these events, every sentence is a calculated sentence that they've thought about it. And they, they mentioned this feature of you being able to turn off the score feature. I guess so, you you know, you're scores aren't necessarily spoiled for you when you open up the app Um, yeah because when they were showing it you had to like go down you know with the remote a mm -hmm. few clicks rows clicks to get to the sports row Uh uh-huh i maybe yeah so so i think um assuming that there's an option to kind of start the game from the beginning if you want to watch it i would think that they're going for well you can have the score thing turned off and you can kind of come to these games whenever you have the time, basically. Um, so if you're one of those people who like absolutely does not want something spoiled for them, um, that would be a useful feature. Definitely. And then this next part is where Netflix and Amazon come in. So Apple will also have the their entire 4K lineup. Excuse me, not their 4K lineup, but the 4K lineup from Netflix and Amazon Prime available by the end of the year on Apple TV. And with a more fleshed out content lineup, Apple is now a competitor to these cord cutting services. So it's interesting to see everyone working together for now, at least. And of course, Netflix and Amazon Prime depend on Apple TV users. But with Apple venturing into live sports and live news, they're starting to encroach on the streaming industry even further. Mm -hmm. And it's something to point out that Amazon Prime has never been available on on Apple TV before. Mm -hmm. So them coming, I think the the Prime little option is coming to Apple TV by the end of the year. I think for like, maybe not the new, well, the new TV, but also the rest of also like the rest of the Apple the app TV store basically by yeah. the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe not even available at launch then for the TV 4K. But yeah, that is certainly interesting to know. And and obviously, if you think about kind of the progression of Apple TV, um, it was originally very much just like a Roku type of deal where it was your outlet to watch Netflix or your outlet. Sh- outlet to go on youtube on your tv or whatnot mm-hmm. um but now with live sports and live tv it's very much uh its own kind of budding media it's like a cable box yeah. but without cable sure and now it's what the 10th 12th major version of that that's on the market so yeah. with the 4k hdr resolution it's one of the first major ones to have such ultra high def picture it's also still, as most things go with Apple, one of the more expensive yeah. options out there. Starts at one seventy nine, I mm-hmm. think. Yep. Yeah. And uh, also coming uh, to stores very soon. So something to be on the lookout there, and uh, a reason why you know the spotlight's kind of also on Netflix and Amazon this week. The kind of final thing that we wanted to point out here was the spotlight that was turned in to the uh, the retail sector following the announcement. The biggest announcements this week, of course, were the two new iPhone devices that Apple unveiled. Um, in line with its typical release schedule, Apple finally revealed the full details of the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. And kind of as a means of celebrating the 10th anniversary of its flagship smartphone, Apple also announced the iPhone X slash iPhone 10. I don't know what the preferred, what which one we're going with right now, but... I prefer X, but 10, I think, is the way it's going. 
There isn't a nine, though, so that's annoying to me. But I digress. <laughs> um, it's an even slicker version of the device. Um, Apple specifically promised that it was the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. This is the. I mean, do you think they regret not having an iPhone nine? I, I don't know. With all these like S, <laughs> S years. You could have like just saved one of the S's and then had a full nine lineup, but. I don't Anyways. know. I mean, it's iPhone 10 for the 10th anniversary. Yeah, that definitely <laughs> like that work. Like that works. I yeah. feel like that was the, like their plan all along. But I mean, Windows also skipped nine as well. So oh, it, maybe it's just that was yeah, yeah. Maybe nine isn't a good number for yes. Tech. I don't know. Screw Seven. nine. Yeah. <laughs> so Who needs that uh, the the iPhone 10 being the um, kind of fancy schmancy one that was rumored edge to edge display facial recognition unlocking system um they also rolled out the an emojis uh thing that utilizes okay, the same face that, recognition that technology. management guy craig yeah he's uh, he was loving uh, it yeah he's he loved it i wouldn't i need what i need is like a day-to-day Apple reality TV show that just follows him around and him just like interacting with those animojis. Get that on Apple TV. That's what we need. He was like, "Look at the look at the cat." Well, he did the poop one too. Oh, he did and, the poop one at the end. And then end. he specifically was like, "If you want to know what the world's biggest technology company does with cutting edge facial te- <laughs> recognition technology, it is to play with animated poop." Mm-hmm. So Did yeah. you also notice the Truly quick the uh, Snapchat copy? Yeah, that yeah. They did? Well, they worked with Snapchat on on some of those. Oh, okay. Is, um, so uh, definitely more copycatting, but this time at least Snapchat was consenting to to it to <laughs> some were, extent. They were in the meeting room with them. Uh huh. Um, so tons of fun, tons of exciting new product unveilings. Uh, iPhone eight, iPhone ten. Lots of things, lots of things to go buy, lots of things to go to the store to buy. I know. So, theoretically, all these things should spell good news for electronics-heavy retailers, including the aforementioned Amazon, as well as brick-and-mortar giants like Best Buy. I want to highlight a quote. Uh, Loop Capital Markets analyst Anthony Chukumba told The Street on Thursday, quote, anytime you have a new iPhone typically with a high-profile launch. It drives store traffic, sales, and overall interest in the consumer electronics space, end quote. So important to to think about here, uh, not only do these companies get a cut when shoppers use their platform to buy a device, you know, obviously Apple is the big winner, but if you decide to go to a Best Buy and go to their iPhone display, that helps Best Buy. But they also benefit, they have the added benefit of uh, accompanying impulse buys is what I would like to call it. For example, if you're at a Best Buy and you said, okay, iPhone 10, $999. Um, I'm also probably to protect my $1,000 investment going to want to pick up a case. Or maybe I'm there and I'm going to go over and I'm check out the xbox games or um i think i also want uh, a different pair of headphones with this too let me go look. i've already spent a thousand dollars on a phone let's just keep spending more money look at the let's just display let's just go for it yeah and so you see this it's a trend that we do see with uh iphone releases and so the amazons and the best buys of the world also should be anticipating a big holiday season as far as the consumer electronics and consumer electronics accessories go. So yeah, I I think interesting uh, now that we've looked at retail, other streaming services, other wearable tech giants out there, it's really interesting to look at when the world's biggest technology company has a keynote event and everyone stops what they're doing to pay attention. It's interesting to see how that kind of affects uh, everyone else in the industry in a way that I don't think we would be talking about the reverse of, if that makes sense. 
like the Fitbit Ionic, like it, it, when it gets announced, it's like maybe it can put a dent into Apple Watch sales. It's that Fitbit's first smartwatch. Can it compete with the Apple Watch? Whereas Apple does anything, and the first thing that we think of is all of the people that are going to be feel the ripple effects of it. Yeah, in it's, both positive and negative. Yeah, definitely. Well. And kind of like a twisting positive and negative where maybe we're not super impressed with Apple. So now we're going to shift our attention to Fitbit finally, which is kind of like a weird phenomenon that goes on as well. Um, yeah, big week for just the overall consumer electronics industry. And unfortunately, a big week for the cybersecurity industry as well mm-hmm. um, in some not great news. But I think that just about does it for us this week. As a reminder, if you feel we missed anything or if you want us to cover a different story, uh, feel free to shoot us an email at podcast at zax.com. You can also check out all of our other exclusive audio content at zax.com slash podcasts. Remember to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for joining us, and we will see you next time on the Zax Friday Finish Line.